uh, yesterday I did a talk on using result instead of policy that's a feature in group policy and how to kind of troubleshoot systems. So if I have a bunch of policies that may be applied to a computer, what is that computer getting? Or maybe I have policies that are supposed to be applied, you know, so the user gets a corporate wallpaper, but they're not. I can use result instead of policies to figure out why they're not. So I showed how to do that with the GUI, there's a group policy management console, and then also with PowerShell. So I always have to do something with PowerShell. And then tomorrow I'm doing a talk on managing the registry with Windows PowerShell. Well, I'll talk about using the PowerShell provider, I'll also, which is the preferred way. Some people, if they don't have that, then I'll show how to use the .NET command, the .NET classes. And then lastly, if you are really desperate, uh, you can use WMI, which is just a gnarly way to do it, but um, hopefully we'll try to squeeze in demos of all of those things. Most of my talks tend to be pretty demo heavy, light on slides, like to show people. I think people get more out of that anyway. Yeah, they should be learning PowerShell this year because, first of all, if they didn't learn it last year, they should be learning it this year. Um, PowerShell is, as Microsoft has been saying for a couple years now, and a lot of people have been saying, it's the management tool you will be using going forward. So if you're not using it now, you will be, so why put it off? And you're right, there are a lot of PowerShell sessions here. They get a lot of attendance. You know, a lot of people are interested because PowerShell now is everywhere. We have Link and SharePoint and SQL, plus all the third-party vendors that are here. You know, Citrix apparently, uh, Citrix has uh, some PowerShell stuff and someone was telling me that Cisco has uh, some sort of PowerShell implementation. And then the, the third-party vendors who have, who support the ecosystem like Sapien and, and PowerWF um, and Idera and all those people have getting in on that. So there's more value add that PowerShell is bringing. And PowerShell is not also just the command line. So that's which what I think scares a lot of people off, right? They think, oh, I have to open up a, a prompt and type a command. There are a number of GUI-based tools that you can use in order to work with PowerShell without even knowing you're working in PowerShell. I co-wrote a book with Don Jones called Windows PowerShell TFM, um, published by Sapien Press, which is kind of a, a soup to nuts approach to the book, really written for IT pros in mind. Uh, we take a very kind of a re real world approach. You won't find very many hello world type examples. So we go through and we teach you, for example, on how to work with the registry. I have real world examples. But we start with the language and work your way through. So by the end of the book, if you go all the way through, you have some really advanced topics. And then the other book that I just wrapped up is a second edition of Managing Active Directory with Windows PowerShell, TFM, also published by Sapien Press. And that book is a second edition that still includes coverage on the Quest commandlets that you can use to manage Active Directory. And this version now covers the Microsoft commandlets. And all the stuff I had in the first book on using ADSI, that's been moved back to an appendix. So you really, for people who have to manage Active Directory, which includes group policy, there's a whole chapter on that. You can either learn, for example, I need to create a user. Well, here's how you do it with the Microsoft commandlets. Here's how you do it with the Quest commandlets. And if you, for some reason, can't use either of those and have to resort to using ADSI in PowerShell, you can go back to the appendix and find the, the old material. So the book is like 80 to 90% new and revised material from the, the first edition. So that's real exciting. I'm hoping that everyone gets their hands on PowerShell. The thing to do with PowerShell is you have to use it every day. So if you use it every day, even just for a little bit, that's how you're going to learn it. I'm working on a Managing Windows Server 2008 R2. It's kind of a mouthful. Maybe we'll come up with something smaller than that, and there's some shortcut. But basically, the, the course is aimed at IT pros who need to manage Server 2008 R2, basically the kind of the core operating system. And I want to show how you can do all these things with Windows PowerShell. So things like managing the file system, managing printers, working with the registry, working with event logs. Now, the great thing about PowerShell is if I can do it for one machine, I can do it for 10 or 100. And 
so the, the course will kind of show you how we can do it for one, and then if you need to scale it out, we'll show how you can scale it out. And that's really where PowerShell comes into play because I can search, you know, event logs on a hundred machines with a one-line command, and set that up as a scheduled job and have it run every day. So that's really amazing stuff. And I'm real excited about it, and I'm hoping that it's a very practical course because I want people to be able to say, okay, how do I do this? Oh, let me go to the lesson. Okay. How did Jeff do that? Oh, now I see that. And I'm expecting all the script samples I have will be made available, so they'll, they'll have code that they can, and commands that they can start with without having to try to stare at the screen and screen scrape the, the shot. So I'm looking forward to it. I do other PowerShell training. Um, I have a couple other writing things in the works. I have some video things, other small video, not full-blown like I'm doing for train signal, um, kind of things like to try. There's always something that's on my wish list to do, providing I can ever find the time, so. Twitter, uh, at Jeff Hicks, I'm pretty active. I, actually, there's a lot of PowerShell information people can get on Twitter, because a lot of PowerShell MVPs, a lot of people who are really active in the community, uh, people ask questions and people can get answers. I mean, it's kind of hard in 140 characters, but I've done my part in at least directing people someplace to solve a question, if not be able to solve it outright in 140 characters. That's a real challenge, but that's always fun. So, yeah, Twitter's a great, great place to be. Yes, I still write the Professor PowerShell for mcpmag.com, and I also still blog quite actively, uh, jdhitsolutions.com slash blog. I try to write something new at least once or twice a week. Usually on Fridays, I try to do something fun. I kind of started this Friday fun tag. So it, it's silly things, but hopefully they, they kind of showcase or demonstrate some PowerShell technique or command or, or something. So, yeah, so I'm still quite busy doing all of that.